Hello everyone. If you're here, you're very lucky because I've been working with uh, two other people in doing the simplest possible way to implement Flux in a React.js application. And this is the result of all that work. We're going to be explaining it. We're going to be doing an exercise like this one where you could add new contacts into your application. It's a contact list. Like for example, I could say Roger Villan and then Roger at email.com. I save it and it shows here. And you can also delete it and update it. I was not kidding when I said that this is a really simple way of learning and using Flux or the simplest that I have found in six or a year that I've been working on simplifying it because uh, we teach at a school and we are teaching always to students Flux, Redux and other frameworks and we're always trying to make it easier and easier to understand so so everyone can can really be at the same the same speed in the class right uh, so we have developed this this library that you can find on on the academy website it's here react flux dash and i'm going to be basing my explanation on this because it's a simple it's a simplified version of flux but it's still using the all the concepts and it's still forcing you to understand and use all the concepts related to Flux. I just think that when you start looking at Flux tutorials out there, you're going to hit a wall a little bit because you're going to see that you have to do so much stuff just to make sure that your application works. And that's only with Flux. Uh, when you get to other to other uh, libraries like Redux, it's even, even worse. It took me two days to just set up uh, Redux and... Uh, I consider myself a senior developer. I'm not the, the smartest one, but I'm uh, I'm good enough. You know, I'm not I'm I'm more than average. So I think it's if if it was hard for me, I think it's gonna be hard for most of the people. But first, let's address why flux. Uh, if if you are used to doing components in React, you already know that every component has a local state, right? and they have their own local state and you should not share states in between components so this this component for example cannot have any communication with, with this other component unless it has like a parent component where you can send everything to the parent one and then the parent will send it to the to the other to the sibling of this one more like what happens here that this parent component can on the local state can send something as a to the properties of the other component and then when the other component receives it it will start in its own local local com component uh, state and then if it needs to send it back it will send it back through a prop function to the parent component but what happens when you start using libraries like like react router react router it's amazing because it, it lets you really do an entire application only using react before react router or any other alternative routing library it will be almost impossible to do an application in react that can use only react because how will you have several different urls for your application so basically if you want to use something like react router you need to have now a global application data then we're going to call it the store the store is nothing like it's no more than like a big variable that contains a lot of data that it's going to be used by all the components it's going to be it's going to be shared between all the components but you still need the local state of each of them because you should only store data that is related to the application data like for example here that we're building a contact list the list of contacts will be here on the local application data but other data like for example like if i want to show a model or not or if the background color of something or all of that should not be stored in the in the store because the store is not, doesn't need to do anything with it like this component needs that data if it's going to be rendered in blue the other component doesn't need to know that this component is going to be rendered in blue and if you put everything into a big store then everything then your application will stop being it will start being slower we start be uh, 
being a slower application because it's gonna have to do a lot of things because you'll see that putting everything on the global application data when you put something into the global application data you will have to do like a series of steps just to be able to share it and the computer is gonna have to be able to run those steps every time so it's gonna eventually it's gonna be slower another thing that I wanted to talk is about Redux versus Flux because out there the most popular the most popular library to to centralize the store of an application is Redux. I've used it um, over it. I mean, I understand why it, why it exists, but I think it's an overcomplicated uh, solution for a simple problem. And I think Flux or the context Facebook context API it's enough to just do very good applications. Maybe if you're doing like an enterprise application that is going to be huge, maybe Redux is it's something that you could use. I don't. I'm not saying it's a bad technology. I think it's an amazing technology. I just think it's too complicated to to implement. So I, I prefer to use Flux, and I have used Flux in most of my developments, and it's it's cool. I mean, Facebook is using Redux, so don't listen to me. Listen to them. Uh, another important concept is because we're gonna start start talking about the pages and views instead of components, because we have to differentiate when uh, when a when a component has a bunch of other components inside. We're gonna call it a page, because like for example, the this URL here add, this is a page that contains several components inside, or or this one is another page that contains this little component this little component here, because you wanna have like a layout like when you were doing websites before, every screen on a website should be a layout here or a page. So a page has layout purposes. It contains components inside. It's not reusable and it integrates with Flux. A component, it's isolated, is reusable, and it has nothing to do with Flux, and you should not do anything related to Flux inside of it. Because if you do it, your component will stop being reusable, because your, your application data will be now binded to your component. So basically, you're going to have something like this, a layout. Uh, you already should have it if you're using a React Router. And then you're going to have a bunch of views, and those views are going to have components inside. And your components could or could not have other subcomponents inside. It doesn't really matter. And in this particular case, in this exercise that we will be doing, we're going to have a centralized store. We're going to have the add contact.js page, that is this one, add contact slash add here. We're going to have the contacts.jsx page, that is the entire list of contacts. And then we're going to have a local state on each of them. And then we're going to have a contact card component. That is this one that you see here. The only the first one because you reuse it for the second one. And it, that one is also going to have like a local state. But it's going to be related only to one contact. Here is a list of the entire con of all the contacts. And this is related only to one contact. The contact that you're adding or deleting. And then we have the centralized store. We need it because we, we want to share stuff between this view and this view. This page and this page. I'm gonna say page sometimes and view some other times because I'm still not used to call it page and I was calling it view before. And even Facebook calls it view sometimes, but it most most of the time it calls it page. Like for example, in this particular um, diagram, this is a very famous diagram that Facebook published. And here you can say that they call it a view. So basically, from your view, you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be listening to user actions like for example when when i type my name here like alejandro and then i type my email ale at email.com when i click on save i'm doing something that it's going to require to store information so i call a, an action there well i don't call it the, the system calls it or we have to put a, a listener on the button that and this particular button you have to put a listener here and then send it to the store, to the action. There's an action that is going to be binded to that click. And that action will take care of the logic of adding the contact into the store. When the action is ready to add it, to save it, it's going to send it to the store and the store is going to save it. So the action takes care of the logic because sometimes it's not as simple as adding a, log a contact. Sometimes you need to grab something from somewhere and then do something with that and then manipulate that and then send it to the store, like in the end. 
So all that logic is going to be in action. The store is like stupid. It only stores stuff. And then it communicates to the view that some stuff has been uh, edited or the new information has arrived to the store. So all the views that care will listen to it. Another possible way of having actions is that the, when the user doesn't doesn't uh, starts the action. Like for example, if you're doing a dashboard that is going to show all the cryptocurrency prices and if they change on the crypto markets, you want to re-render or, or you want to you wanna notify the views that they should re-render. That's an action that is not being triggered by the user. It's an action that is being triggered probably by, by a, a timeout that, or an interval, set interval function in JavaScript that it's going to call every 15 minutes or something like that. You could also open a, a socket, a web socket or something like that and then tell the store and the store will dispatch to the view. The store will notify the views. So a little bit more in detail. The pages are interfaces or components that the user interact with them and then the user touches buttons or move the mouse and do something or the keyboard and they will call some functions in the actions and then those actions will dispatch the new information to the store. The store will save it and then tell the back to the views, I have saved it. So I'm ready. Oh, so you should be ready for me and re-render when I'm with this new information. This is an example little code for the little code that you need for each of the steps. In uh, somewhere in your view, you have to call my actions dot some function, and then you have to pass a data. That data, for example, if I'm clicking on on this button, I'm saying save. Then I need to pass this and I need to pass this because I need to save that. So that's what it's going to come in this variable. And then you send it to the actions. You have a function in the action that it's going to grab the data. And whenever it's finished to be saved, it's going to dispatch an event with an event name. It's going to pass the information, the data that you want to save. And then on the store, you have to register those, those events. Like, for example, contacts could be our event right now. It's going to dispatch con to contacts this data. And then the store needs to say, oh, cool, I, um, I have to save the data. If you don't put anything, you could decide on the store to do some manipulation, so to edit some data. And we can address that later, but that's basically what Reduce proposes, what Redux proposes. It's um, At some point, you have to merge a bunch of data into one big chunk of data, and that... That's what you can do with this uh, second function here. Uh, I'll address that later, but uh, mostly you will not do it in small applications. You will just save it and that's it. And then these, these views, the page again, the last step is that the page is subscribed to the store and the page says, oh, cool. There's new information from the store. Let me re-render and that's it. Okay, I'm ready to start coding. We're going to be using Cloud9. You can use uh, Brackets or Visual Studio or whatever you want to use. I'm using this one here because uh, it's what we use at the Academy. We want all the students to have the same, the same exact coding environment. So I'm used to this one. Um, so this is the project that we're going to be doing. No, it's not this one, actually. It's an... Aha, uh -huh, it's this one. It's projects that breathe code. Uh, contact list. Uh, you already know what it's gonna do. It's it's gonna we're gonna edit stuff like this. We're gonna be able to add contacts and stuff. We're gonna do a, a smaller version because we wanna we wanna be fast. We don't wanna have to do all of those uh, inputs or all of those fields. But you're gonna be able to understand Flux with that version that we're gonna be doing. So don't worry about it. If you wanna look at the readme here, it's in that URL. I'm gonna copy from here the the initial code because it comes already with a boilerplate so I don't have to do all the HTML and CSS. So let's just clone this. Here we have it. Let me show the hidden files so we can move everything outside and then keep working from the root. Okay. Now I'm gonna npm install. npm install. So all the packages uh, that are in the package JSON in this file all these packages are installed manually that reminds me that I we need to upgrade React Flux Dash to version 3 
0.2 at least because after that version we included some some libraries that we're going to be using and um, they make your life a lot easier without compromising any of the of the concepts like we don't want to do everything for for you we just want you to make it easier without sacrificing the understanding and the concepts of everything okay so i'm going to upgrade this library to the version that i was telling you so npm install version 3.0.2 that's my save and after it's fully uh, updated we can proceed to run it let's see it seems that it's taking a while I'll come back okay I don't have to come back then um, now npm run c9 let's see let's run it if you are not using cloud9 you have you can do um, you can uh, you can just copy this part without open host IP port whatever just say webpack dev server minus minus mode development and it's gonna work like this like you can put it here like this and then press enter and it's gonna probably work I'm just gonna do it with like that because Lan 9 forces you to use particular ports so that's why I have it with those extra flags there so after it's running we'll see that if it's running with the initial HTML yes here we have some people here I'm gonna simplify it now I have the functionalities don't work like I cannot edit anything look if I if I press the button nothing happens so it's just a boilerplate and here if I try to delete it doesn't work well it shows a model but it doesn't work and if I click on the on the pencil it only takes me to this view and that's it something happened there okay so let's first simplify it because I don't want to do the entire exercise I just want to do a part of it or I, I want to do the entire exercise but a smaller version of it like for example I don't want phone and address that's not needed like it's enough uh, with just full name the same for when listing the contacts the contact card it's a component that comes with it remember this is what we have right now we have We have a contact contacts your JSX with contact cards inside, a bunch of contact cards that each of them is gonna render a contact, and then we have add contact. That is another view that it's to add the contact or edit the contact as well. So this list of contacts here, the contact card, I'm gonna modify it, it's in components, to make it render only the stuff that we need, because we were we deleted some of the some of the stuff. So the email is not needed. We only need the the name. So let me see with the changes. Yeah, only full name. Get back to contacts. Only the name. That's cool. That's enough. Okay. Now we have to start adding all our flux views and uh, or or everything everything that we discussed at the beginning. So the first thing we're going to be doing is adding a contact. So if you go to the flux diagram, you have to start here, right, in the view, because when the user clicks on add, we are we have to call an action. So let me first look at the actions. I think we don't have any actions here. No, we don't. So I'm just gonna create a file. I'm gonna create actions. .js, and inside we have to do two things. We have to import the library, the React Flux dash. And we also have to create our first action. So I'm going to say const export add contact. And add contacts will receive a contact. So contact. And it will do what? You have to go back here and, and remember. So it needs to contain the logic and code to handle the application data needs. And there's a little example here. Something like this. If, if you see, if you copy and paste this, you'll see that it's similar to what I did. Export some function function. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's wrong. I have to say let add contact, and I'm going to make it like an arrow. 
an arrow function. It's the same as a function, it's just an arrow function. And then this dispatching here, that's how you dispatch from the action to the store. So I'm just gonna put it here. I'm not gonna uh, explain this much yet because we have to do all the, all the, all the other pieces. Contacts. Okay, I'm gonna put this on the right. That's our actions. Now I'm gonna create the store. So new file store.js. We're gonna open it and I'm gonna put it here at the bottom. And the store, it's gonna have we also have to import flux dash and we have to create a class and that we can call it uh, like store maybe yeah extends from flux dot dash store dash store and then in the constructor we have to add the events like this dot add event and we're gonna call the event that we're gonna be handling contacts an event is like a scope of data like we're gonna be managing contacts so I wanna make sure that when the contacts have been managed I wanna communicate to all the views that we have a new version of the contacts that's why we, I call it contacts it's not called add contact the, the event it's called contacts because it's related to the data is not related to user actions. The user actions are in this file. Okay. Uh, I hope when every time you do a constructor, you have to say super if you want to call the constructor of the parent. So apparently there is a problem here. Unexpected token flux. Oh yeah, extends flux. That's it. Okay, and then here I'm gonna export default new store. Because you don't want to export the, the entire class, you just want to export an instance of it. It's going to be a singleton. It has to be a singleton because it's going to be shared between all the, the application. Okay, then we added the event. Let me see what else do we need to do here in the diagram. Okay, we added the event. Ah, we didn't put any transformation. Let me put it with a transformation. So we can discuss it later. I'm just going to put a comma here and, and put the transformation. The transformation means that I'm going to be able, when, when the actions say, please save me this data, I'm going to be able to do some extra modifications before saving it, actually, if I want to. Okay, so I have these two things here. Let me see what's the other here. Unexpected keyword export. Yeah, so I'll, I guess I'll have to do it like this. I'm going to have to say, oh yeah, this is all wrong. Export it. It's like this. Yeah. Data to save is not uh, defined yet. We'll define it right now. Um, yeah, basically, uh, those two pieces are very important. And what's missing right now is to, because remember that the flow says that you call an action, then in the action you dispatch, and then in the store you add the event that is going to save it, and if you want, you add some transformation function, and then that's sent to the to the view, and the view subscribes to it. So I'm, let's subscribe to it in the view. Let's we have to subscribe actually in two views because there's two views that care about it. The first view that cares about it is add, and the second one it's the actual list of contacts. So I'm gonna go to both views and subscribe in both. You should do it in the component did mount. Component did mount. The reason we do it there is because we want to make sure that we have um, everything available, the store, the props, everything. So, aha, uh -huh, here is one of the things that we need uh, to talk about because the, um, we, we are saying this does describe to what store are we subscribing. So I have to import the store from here. So import store from and where is it if I'm standing right now in contacts it's one up and then what inside of store the store folder so it's one up and then stores slash store yeah 
So now I'm saying I want to subscribe to this particular store. What event? The contacts event. So this event. And then this is going to be the function that handles when the contacts have been updated. And we'll probably we'll have we're going to have to re-render here just to show more contacts. Okay, so that's one thing. And then let's say here this dot state. No, this dot set state. And I'm going to reset the state, the property contacts. We don't have the property yet. Uh, and when you subscribe, the function that is going to take care of the changes receives the, the actual, the new version of the contacts. So that's cool. And we can put it here. Set state contacts. Uh, by the way, saying this, saying context is equal to context is the same as just saying context. In, in the new version of JavaScript, you can say that. You can say it like that and it's going to work. So I'm basically resetting the context after the context have been updated. But then what context, probably you ask? Well, let's say here contacts. And by default, that's going to make it uh, just an empty array. And here we have to loop the context. So const, um, let's say um, cards, maybe. It's this.contacts.map, this.state. Dot context dot map and in the map we are gonna be doing we're gonna be adding contact cards because the contact card is the one that renders the contact and to the contact card maybe we can pass some data with the actual contact that we can receive it here in the map so the contact is C and E is the index of the mapping function so C and we need to set up a key because React tells you that you need to set up a key when you loop to create some uh, HTML. And we have to return this because the arrow function has several lines, so we have to return it. What problem do we have? I'm missing a semicolon here. And that's it. Now cards, it's going to be our, our array here. Okay, if I save it, probably we won't see anything. Or maybe we will see an error as well. Let's see. I'll just save it. Let me see if it compiled. Yeah, everything was, was okay on this side. Am I seeing some stuff here? Let me see. Oh, it's preview as the application. I think I was seeing an old one. Yeah, for the errors that I was talking about. Okay. This dot subscribe is not a function. Did we update the library? Oh, it's because um, instead of inheriting from flux view, you have to inherit from this uh, from flux dash view. It had view there because the previous version had view, but now in the 3.0.2, we have to use dash view. What else? Uh, store dot subscribe is not a function store.subscribe this is not a store let me see what else do we have here we don't need this model context Let me see. Okay, apparently it's uh, now working, but believe me, I didn't do anything. I think it was some like catch error or anything or something. Um, it's rendering. I have the same code. I haven't touched anything. I actually like three minutes have passed. So I don't need to re-explain anything. We have our our actions, our store, and our two our two views here at contact contacts and contact card so what we're going to be doing is trying to first let's first like render the contacts and that's it let's just render them i'm gonna i'm gonna add some stuff into the store just to yeah let's 
here, let me finish this, this view, this uh, action. The action needs to actually add the contact. So what I'll be doing is that I'll say first, I'll, I'll say uh, first, let me get the contacts from the store. So contacts, I have to import the store here too. So let me import it. And then I make this a little bit smaller. Yeah. And then I'll say store dot get event contacts. I'm gonna get all the information that is in the event contacts. And then I'm gonna say here because at the beginning the contact is the contact list is null. So I'm gonna say if there's no contacts, then let's create a new array of contacts and I'm gonna pass contact as the first contact on that array. I'm gonna reset contacts to an array of contacts. But if else, I'm gonna say, let me remove this line so we can see everything on the same screen. I'm gonna say else, there's contacts, so let me just push the actual con the new contact. And then we're gonna pass the entire list of contacts to the store, dispatch it. So that is it. We just did our action. The store is gonna receive the contacts, the data, the entire list of contacts, and save it. And the view, the contact view, it's gonna listen to the to when the contacts change, and it's gonna receive the entire list of contacts, and it's gonna re-render with the new list of contacts. But now we need to uh, finish it. So to finish it, no, like to to make it work. So I'm gonna start by adding a contact here. Here, adding a contact is here in the form adding new contact. So I have to listen to when this input changes. So let me listen to it. Where's the input? No, it's not in the contact card, it's in the add contact. Uh -huh, here. Here's the input. Input type, class name. Let me put all of this like this so we can see it. Actually, I think I can take a little bit more space here. Cool. Then my input has all these properties and I'm gonna add a new one. I'm gonna add on click. No, on change, I'm sorry. On change. Because that's how you retrieve information from an input with React. You have to put an on change, receive the event information, and say this dot state uh, set state. I'm sorry, set state, and you have to pass the new state that it's going to contain. Like this is the full name, so full name e dot target dot value. So I'm saying. Please reset the state on every change with whatever the input has inside. Put it in the variable full name. I have to initialize it here, so let me initialize it. I'm gonna start by saying that this dot state is equal to full name. It's empty by default. So that's it. Now the the save. Here's the button. So let's when they click on the button to save we are going to call the action, right? That's what we need to do. So it will be, I have to import the actions here. So import actions from like all the actions. So asterisk as actions, because I want to import all the functions, not only one. Since we're not exporting by default, then we have to import each of them but if you don't want to import each of them you can just put an asterisk and say as actions and all of them are going to be in actions it's like having an ob an object of all these functions so from where from uh, i have to go one way up and then actions and then action again let me see actions actions yeah one up actions action and then semicolon. So there's our three steps now. Let me see. Uh, I have to, I'm gonna subscribe here as well. It's in this view. I'm gonna subscribe and the component did mount. But instead of resetting the context, I'm just gonna say this dot history dot push to send it back to the list of contacts. 
the list of contacts is just the home home page. Yeah. Um, this dot props dot history dot push is how React Router uh, lets you redirect to another page, another view. So I'm just redirecting. I'm gonna explain in, in a little bit uh, why. Let's just add a new contact now. There's no errors. Yeah, it says fail to compile. Let me see what the problem is. Oh, the onclick. I haven't finished it. So onclick. I'm gonna say actions dot add contact. And where is the contact? Like I have to pass a contact. As you can see it receives a contact here. So the contact is gonna be. I'm gonna create it right now. I'm gonna say full name is equal to this dot state dot full name because I just started when when the input change when the input changes. I'm gonna start it in the full name, and then when they press click, I'm gonna grab it from the state and put it in in a, in, in a new object here that it's gonna be sent. It's gonna be passed here. So let's say those three things. Let's see if it compiles. Fail to compile again. Store is not defined in add contact. Am I using the store? Oh yeah. So I have to import it here as well. Let me import it. There it is. Compiling. Compile with wordings. That's cool. Okay. So now we're here. And we have another error. Let me see what the error is. This dot subscribe is not a function in add contact. It's because we have to inherit from flux dot dash view, not from flux view. So let me change it, and that's it. And now it's rendering. Okay, so cool. We don't have any contacts, right? Let's just try to use it first with before starting to put breakpoints. I'm gonna add a new contact. It's gonna be Alejo. I'm gonna save it. And we had an error. Let me see the error. Get event is not a function. Oh, so it's not uh, get event. So it's a get state. I'm sorry. I had a here in in the in the action is get state, not get event. That's how you get the list of contacts. The the store contains all the information from contacts so you're you're getting the information from the event contacts and you're putting in this variable I know it's an array because I'm gonna set it as an array at the beginning it's null but I'm gonna set it as an array okay let's try again um, here again I'm gonna add a new contact I'm gonna press save and nothing happened but at least I was redirected Ah, uh, yeah, nothing happened because uh, this is what happening. I'm, we're subscribing on contacts.jsx. We are subscribing from from um, on component mount. But after we subscribe, we don't actually reset the state. We're setting it. We're resetting the state on. Uh, only after the context has been updated, but they have they are updated after component mount. So we never actually set the first state of, of context. So let's do this as well here. Let's get the context and reset the state and then start listening to the changes. Okay. But only if I'm gonna do this only if the contacts are not null, because if the contacts are null, I don't wanna reset the state because it's gonna break my code. Yeah. Okay, let's try again. Add new contact. Save. There's a breakpoint here. Let's just ignore it. And here it is. Mike Amendola. Let me add a new one. Pablo. Oh, all of them are Mike Amendola. <laughs> yes, because we have to change the contact card. We had to put, instead of Mike Amendola, we're going to have to put here. Uh, whatever we pass is it's like this dot props dot full name right because we pass here when we're rendering we're saying data so it's it's actually this dot props dot data dot data dot full name let's start again and see there's a problem here data is missing from the props validation yeah we have to put it in the validation here data because we're using Proptides, the Proptides library, that it's, it's super cool because it lets you validate all the data that you use in your components. Okay, now it's validated. Let's try again. Add. 
now it chose Alejandro and it should if we put Tom here it chose Tom yeah so um, let's let's do one experiment I'm gonna I'm gonna expose the the um, at contact into the window object window dot at contact it's equal to at contact I'm gonna do it because I want to show you guys how if we update the store this view is gonna get notified in the subscribe here I'm gonna do it first like this I'm gonna say window window dot add contact and I'm gonna pass a new contact to it here let's say a full name it's um, Jerry and then I'm gonna call it one two three you see how Jerry was rendered now it's because the store let Jer let the view know that he was updated so basically what happened here is that the store here said Oh, I was updated, and then since we were listening to, we were subscribed to the store, to that event, uh, the in the contacts page, it re-rendered. I can also do it with breakpoints, and you'll see. Like in the sources here. Let's put a breakpoint in, uh, in contacts. I'm going to put a breakpoint on the line 19. So this line will be called if the store changes. Because we're subscribed, right? So it's gonna be called and it's gonna pass the new list of contacts. So I'm gonna make the store change again. I'm gonna pass instead of Jerry, let's just put Jamal. And then I'm gonna call it. And there we go. We stopped here on this particular line because the new the new list not house has Jerry and Jamal. But we haven't reset the state, so that's why Jerry is still here on the left. We need Jamal on the left. So let's let it flow. And there's Jamal. Right? So now if we want to do the other the other the other use cases, we have to do the same. Like but actually it's a lot less because we already have the store. We don't have to change the store. We don't have to all we have to do is add new actions and call them. So let me add new actions here. I'm just gonna do the delete. Let's do the delete. I'm going to say here, let me start from scratch here. I'm going to say export, let. This doesn't have to be a let. It could be a const, actually. It's better to use const if you're not going to change it because it requires less memory or it, it has better performance on, on the computer. So delete contact. We're going to have to pass home to delete contact. And then... We're going to say here, give me the list of contacts, the same that we did here. Give me the list of contacts from the store. And then we're going to filter that, right? We're going to say uh, let or const new list of contacts, of contacts. It's going to be contacts.filter. And then we're going to pass a filtering function that is going to say if... Well, it's going to return false if contact it sees is if it's different from contact. Let me put it here. Okay, so we're saying if the contact filter. Okay, let me see what's the error. Missing semicolon. Okay. If we want to delete this guy, right? So we're going to retrieve the list of the entire list of contacts. And on, on each of them, this is a contact that is going, it's being looped. On each iteration, we're going to say, okay, this contact is equal to this contact. If it is, it's going to return true. If it's not, it's going to return false. So basically, we're going to, we're going to delete the contact when it's the same contact that was passed to the function delete contact. Now, all we have to do is, again, dispatch the new updated list of contacts that is this one. Let's see if it works. Now we have to bind it. We have to go back to the to the flux store, to the diagram, I'm sorry. Because what triggers this action? It's not adding a contact, it's deleting it. So it's triggered when you click on the on the on the trash can. So the trash can it's in contact card and it's this one. 
fa fa trash alt yeah you can see it uh let me add a new contact so you can see it uh tom so this is a trash can if you inspect it you're gonna see how this is the actual trash can it's a fun awesome fun awesome icon so we're gonna say oh here it is look it was already implemented the on click for it's gonna it's gonna call the parent component because remember that the contact card it's this component here so it needs to call the parent and the parent is the one that needs to call flux or the actions so we want to send from here from this component to the parent component through the props and then from and the parent is that we want to use it so we're saying this that props that on delete we're calling this function on delete and we should probably say uh, pass pass the entire data right so this dot props dot data to the parent so the parent that is contact should listen to the on delete should also we need to add here the on delete so let me add it in the contact card like on delete it's equal to a function that it's gonna call an action saying actions here we have the contact actions dot the lit I'm just gonna copy it from here if you delete contact this contact apparently we haven't imported actions so let me import it actions 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 let me see it's in it's in actions and it's called actions yeah so it's cool so we are here let me see if the delete works i'm gonna add tom again then i'm gonna delete tom oh it's sending me somewhere else why is it sending me here like to edit ah because i clicked on on, on the wrong one it's on the on the trash can so the trash can is triggering an error let me see what the error is can every property delete contact of undefined so i'm not importing actions properly because he's saying that actions is undefined, so it cannot be the property delete contact. Let's see why that's happening. Ah, oh, yeah, because I think we don't need to go, yeah, we do need to go one up, then get inside actions, and then actions. Ah, remember there is asterisk as actions. Yeah, that's it. Because we're not exporting by default here, we're just importing each of them. So I'm just gonna import all of them by doing this. Okay, again, let's add Tom. And let's delete Tom here. And it's working now. So basically what's happening is that uh, we are calling the function from the from the from this component, the contact card. Now first, we're saying, okay, add me a list of contacts on each iteration, on each loop, create a new contact card and pass three things to it, a key, a data, and an on delete. So basically on this side, we're saying, oh, uh, on delete was passed to us. So when when the trash can is clicked, call the on delete function that was passed to us and pass the actual contact that is one is going to be deleted. And then on the parent, we're back into the parent. The parent is saying, oh, okay, cool. So this is the contact that you need me to delete. Cool. So let me just delete the contact or the call the action to delete the contact. And then the action is saying, oh, this is the contact that you want me to delete. It's like playing hot potato. Everyone's passing around the contact. But the action is the one actually deleting it because it's saying, okay, give me the list of contacts and filter it and remove the contact from the list in the loop and saving into the store, dispatching to the store the new list of contacts. And the store is doing whatever he's always doing. It's just um, doing nothing <laughs> right now because we don't have any transformation. Okay, let me add delete contact as well to the window so we can test it on real time. Delete contact is equal to delete contact. Let's try it right now. Let me just um, let me add a new contact, Tom. Let me add it from here, Jamal. Okay, then I'm gonna add also. Uh, Barry and then I'm gonna delete delete oh this is gonna be challenging because here the problem is that I will have to store Barry into a variable 
first because if I call delete contact like this I have no way of passing this object because if I pass this object it's not actually Barry it's another guy look it's nothing is happening it's another guy with the same name but it's another guy because it's a new object in the memory it's not the same object in memory it's a new object with the same name so I will have to first store let me let me say let um, contact it's equal to let me add another another person I'm gonna add Kim and then I will be able to add Kim and also delete Kim so window dot add contact there it is here's Kim and now I'll I can do window dot delete contact it's the same variable so it's the exact same contact and it's now being deleted you see you see how fast it is like all of this happens in like a millisecond now the last one that we need to do is to edit for editing we need to use um we need to use the url because how do we know on the add that we're adding on how do we know that we're editing so for that we will need to pass it here you see how the url is different it's because here in layout we're using React Router, and here in Layout, we're saying that we want the root add and the root delete to point to the same component here. But on delete, we're going to have to say whom to delete, like this, like uh, contact ID. And then, now that we say who, who do we want to delete, or let's say by name, like contact name, contact name. We're going to delete by name now. So if we have two people with the same name, they're going to both be deleted because we're deleting by name. Because we need an ID, like the ideal would be like a social security number or having a, our own ID from the database. But since we don't have it, we're going to do it uh, with the name and, and that's it. So well, all we have to do now is to implement the edit like this. Export, const, delete. We're going to say edit. Edit, contact. And editing a contact is getting the contacts again and then instead of filtering them we're gonna map them we're gonna say the new list of contacts it's gonna is the back it's a map it's identical oh uh, no we cannot yeah we can map actually we're gonna map all the contacts and we're gonna say here we're gonna say if the contact full name it's equal to this contact full name then we're gonna change it oh yeah but we just change it so how it's gonna work it's not gonna work we're gonna have to add an id yeah we're gonna have to add a random id so let's do that uh fast here on the add that we're adding a contact uh, it's actually a pretty cool idea to use the transformation for that now. Yeah, let's use let's just assume that they're gonna have an ID. If the IDs are the same, then we're gonna edit the original one. We're gonna return. We're gonna return the new one instead of just leaving the old one. And then we're gonna send it to the store. So we're saying loop all the contacts, and if the ID is equal to this one return the new contact instead of the previous one that it's C. So the new array is going to be the same as the, the one before, but with uh, it's going to have swap it the contact that we wanted to edit. Okay. So this should work. Now let's make, let's make sure that all the contacts have an ID. And for that, that's super cool because we can use the, the store transformation function. Let's go to the store here. And let's say every time that you receive a new list of contacts, I want you to map all of them. So I'm gonna say let no const contacts it's equal to data.map and on each iteration we're gonna say I want you to the original contact I want you to add an ID to it. Uh, it's gonna be a math.rand without decimals so 
10 let's say a thousand and let math.flow this is a random number that's it it's a random number that I'm gonna make it super big because I don't want to I want to make sure that the, that random number it's never the same okay and then instead of returning data we are going to return context that is an, an array that is exactly the same as the original one but with an id on each of them so we're transforming the array every time that someone says i want to save this contact list we're saying okay cool but i'm gonna add some ids to it to it cool Let's see if it works because I have never done something like this. I think I always use the transformation for function for something else. Um, so we have the edit contact now. We have to go to the because going back to the to the workflow, the view that triggers that it's it the contact the contact card triggers it when it's click on the on the pencil. So I'm gonna go to the pencil. I'm gonna say here. Yeah, it's pushing to edit. It's gonna push to edit concatenated with data dot id. Yeah, this dot props dot data dot id. So this dot props dot data dot id. I wanna make sure that we append the id of the contact when it's being redirected. And also here in layout, I made a mistake. It's not contact name. It's gonna be id. Yeah. Okay. So now here in contacts, in add contact, we can say we can say uh, mode mode edit by default it's going to be add okay but i'm going to say in component mount i'm going to say if this dot props dot match dot params that's how you receive parameters from the url dot id it's if it's different from undefined if type of these are probably much of patterns that ID it's different from undefined it it's it's because we're editing right so I'm gonna say this dot state set state and here I'm gonna say uh, mode it's equal to edit and then I'm gonna also get the contact right because we need to get the contact so let me get the contact here i'm gonna say uh const contact it's equal to store dot because it's with get state get state contacts I'm gonna get all the contacts and I have to grab the the one that that we want and I'm gonna use the filter for that so const this is contacts and this is gonna be the actual contact contact it's equal to contacts dot filter I think we have dot find let me see js find array yeah Cool. It returns the index of an array of an element that was found. Okay, let me see if I can use it. Uh, find, and I'm gonna pass the function that finds, and it needs to use the params. So I'm gonna say uh, this is the contact. So if the contact ID it's equal to this it's found and now apparently this returns this returns the array find this returns the actual index of the guy oh no it returns the actual first element that's cool yeah okay 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 okay, okay. So, if this guy exists, it will be cool because it will have all that we need. And since we already bind it into the store, the input, if we put into the state, I'm sorry, if we put the full name, if we put an object with full name, it's going to be binded already. 
So let's see if it works. Uh, let me just go back. It's already having a, f uh, a problem, I guess. That data map is not a function. So data ah because at the beginning data is null. Yeah, so I'll just um, in the store. I'm gonna say only if data like if no data, then return data, and that's it. That way I, I avoid the error. Again, but I said that I want to return. Let me see what's the error. Fresh. Hmm. Again, refresh. So what's the value of data? Ah, it's an object. It's like an empty object. Okay. So I guess it's not like that. It's uh, we can say array is array data. If data is not an array, just return data because I don't want to loop anything. Okay. It seems to be working now. Let's see. I'm gonna add a new. I'm gonna add Tom. Aha. Uh -huh. So math.floor has two O's. That was the problem. Save. That's it. Okay. Everything seems cool. Let me add Tom. There seems not to be any errors. Yeah, we do have some errors. So let's see. Full name of undefined. We're going to have to see what happened there in the add contact. Maybe maybe it was the looping part that I added because that's the new thing. So let me just see if this works. I'm gonna refresh. I'm gonna add Tom again. It's not even here. Let me see again. Okay, data, it's an object. Now I'm gonna add Tom. Data should be now an array of objects, and it is. Since it is an array, then I can just go to the next one. Let me see what context is here now. Now Tom has an ID. Yeah. And I can let's let's go and see what happens in contacts here. But it's gonna it's gonna take me to context now. So I'm gonna go into the did mount of contacts and the list of contacts should be it's undefined, look. So something happened there, let me see. Ah yeah, it didn't return on the mapping. Yeah, after you finish map on every iteration you have to return the new object. So I'm gonna return C. And that's it. It should work. Let me see, a new contact, Tom, press save. There's Tom, okay. Let me add another one, Kim. Let me now edit Tom. It doesn't say Tom, but it has the ID there, you see. Let me see why, it, and it says add. So my, uh, this function is probably not working. Let's get back and see again. I'm gonna edit this dot prop dot patterns dot match so I swap the elements the the values it's it's here in add is this dot props dot params dot match that's how it how it is okay let's see again this is not gonna work because the contact doesn't exist but we can add a new one now hmm What's, what's the problem now? Kind of read property match of undefined. Yeah, it's undefined because because there's nothing there. Let me see. Let me refresh again. Patterns props dot match dot patterns. So I guess it was right at the beginning. So that's not the real problem. Let's see. 
params id is undefined so it's adding yeah so let me add tom now if i go back this dot props dot match dot params that's cool dot id it is different from undefined so that's cool it should get inside the if yeah it's getting inside the if it's getting the contacts here it is it's a list of contacts and then it's looping and it found look it found Tom and now it's recently stayed with mode edit and contact contact is Tom mode edit and contact yep but then oh because it's full name here not contact yeah let me let me change that here it's full name and here's contact dot full name. Yeah, I, like I was not paying a lot of attention here. I need to pay more attention. Okay, full ah uh, Tom, and I'm gonna also add Amanda, and then I'll edit Amanda. Boom, and still not working super cool yay yay so what's the problem here back edit let me see let me see it found amanda yeah there it is full name is equal to full name Oh yeah, I'm missing one little part. I have to pay more attention because the input is we have to say value is this dot state dot full name. Because we have to set the value of the input to whatever whatever came from the full name. Yeah. Okay. Let's refresh and now let add Amanda. Amanda. Let me also add Tom. Now I'm going to delete Amanda. There it is, Amanda. Woohoo! And let's save it here. And because of the my solution doesn't work for the IDs, because it, it has a different ID now. So what I'll say is that if you don't have an ID already, I'm going to add you an ID. If you have, I'm, I'm not going to add it to you. So I'm going to say here, if this ID type of, type of, See the ID, it's equal, it's different. No, it's equal to undefined. I will add you an ID. If not, I will not add you any ID at all. So that should work. Let me see. So here's Amanda. Amanda. And Tom. Let me now edit Amanda and put an I at the end. And here we go again. Why is this happening? Ah, uh, because in the comparison, yeah, we're not comparing with ID. We have to change that now. We were comparing objects and now we're comparing IDs. So uh, the filtering is c.id, contact.id. And also because we need another problem is that in in our add contact we're calling always add contact and we we don't call always add contact we need to call add or edit so i'm gonna put several lines here i'm gonna say depending on the mode right so i'm gonna say if i'm gonna put in one line so we could we're gonna have a clear view of what we're doing. So if this dot state dot mode it's equal to add that. If it's edit the other one. And that's it. And we're gonna call here edit. Edit contact. Yep. And then we need the other closing bracket. Okay. 
please no more errors please let me see Amanda and Tom I'm gonna edit Amanda now another error cannot read property ID of undefined who's undefined Ah, oh, if it's equal from undefined. That's here in the store. Yeah. C is undefined now. Can you imagine? Let me see without this. I don't feel any confident now. I think we're going to keep having some issues. Let's see. ASD. We're getting now to the ASD. Okay. I try to edit and it says that. Why is it having undefined? Let me save it here. Yeah, it's undefined. So that's basically, I guess, because one of the actions. We don't have the actions here, right? No. So one of the actions is it's messing it up. Let's see. Actions. Maybe it's the edit. Yep, let's see. I'm gonna start from scratch and see what's happening here. Amanda. And then I'm gonna edit Amanda. I don't have to add another one. The new list of contacts contains what now? Let's let's watch it here. New list of contacts. Oh, it says not available for some reason. Let me see in the store what's being sent to it here. The new data that it's arriving. It's an undefined so basically I'm um, in the actions I'm returning oh it's because I also forget here contact contact no but contact no it's not in the undefined oh maybe the ID is not equal to the ID yeah yep let's let's check it out I'm gonna try again So Amanda, here's OK, and then let me add another E. OK, so this ID is 3, 4, 0, and this one is undefined. Yeah, because it's a new contact, So, it, but it's not a new contact. It's the old one. I have to pass, with, I have to pass it with the contact. Yeah. When we when we when we added into the when I added into the contact list because yeah, you guys didn't do anything. It's all my bad code. I added only with the full name. You see, so I have to pass the ID as well. Yeah, so the ID is uh, this dot state dot ID. This one here as well. I don't want to adding now when editing only because when, when, when it's adding we don't have any any ID yet and then also when I'm receiving it I was storing it here I was saying that I wanted to pass the full name but also the ID you know contact that ID and also here in the contact list. I oh, know here's okay. Okay, let's try now. Refresh. Go back. And then Amanda. Now I'm gonna edit Amanda with a Y at the end. And now we have an ID here. And we have an ID here. Yep, and they are the same. 
now this data is being sent with the right stuff so it's finally done let's add Tom and let's add Emily now I'm gonna edit Tom Thomas Thomas and what happened there something happened Kind of set property ID of undefined. Let's call it again. So data C is undefined. Hmm. Yeah, so only Thomas is, is defined. The other two are not defined. It's because I'm only yeah here. I'm not saying what happens on the else. So I'm just going to say here, return contact. Yeah, because I'm saying, okay, if they are the same, then return contact. If not, then return C, you know, because contact is the new one. That's, it's to be the one being edited. But what happens if it's different? I should return the old one, you know, the, the old people. In the loop. Okay, so no more bugs, I promise. Well, I cannot actually promise that. That's what I want to promise, actually. But let's see that. Tom, Amanda, and Emily. Now let's edit Amanda and put an E at the end. That's cool. Now let's edit Emily and put something also here. That's cool. Let's edit Tom. Woohoo! Let's edit them. Uh, and it's all finished. So basically, you guys know now that it's all about adding actions calling those actions from the view and then those actions dispatch and then the the views subscribe and refresh when the store has finally finished and the transformation here is when you add want to add some stuff into the contacts or when you want to get merge from other let's say that you have another another event here that is not contact let's say that it's um um, houses and I want to have a list of houses and I want to add the contacts that own the houses so I could do it here this transformation is it's called reducing it's a technique being used a lot in Redux but here it's also very easy to do this is the simplest approach you can find about flux out there so I hope you guys liked it We're, we have worked a lot into making this very simple to you I know it took me a while but uh, forgive me for all my mistakes See you next time.